And we're back with the third installment of this experiment where we're using HP tuners to modify the transmission calibration in our 2014 uh, Chevy Silverado with the 6L80 in it. And in this installment, we're gonna look at what does HP tuners change when we adjust max pressure, max pressure B, max clutch, and max line pressure. Now, as I mentioned in my other videos, there's a whole series of 6L80 videos on the site. So if you're interested in that, please feel free to check those out. And I want to thank Nick Middlebrun again for all of his work. He spent a lot of time doing these tests with me, and I really appreciated his help. And these experiments pretty much followed the same process. I measured clutch pressure at the individual clutches, and I recorded it using the HP scanners feature. And I uploaded all that information to Automotive Textbook, as well as these presentations, free of charge. On the baseline test, I ran the vehicle at 40% wide open throttle, and then I've got this alternate wide open throttle. The only difference between these two wide open throttles is the alternate wide open throttle. It didn't have throttle reduction during the upshift uh, as torque management. So on the modified test, we ran it at 40% as well. And of course we did a wide open throttle run. And if it had throttle reduction for torque management, we could compare it to uh, the baseline wide open throttle. If it didn't have throttle reduction, then we can focus on the alternate wide open throttle. But throughout this presentation, even in this PowerPoint, I compare the key pressures. Now in this presentation, I'm gonna focus on, I'm gonna create like a summary, if you will, of what I found, if there's any significant changes or not. And later on in this presentation, which won't be part of the video, but will be part of the um, PowerPoint, if you download it, it includes all the specific information. So there for you to download. So this first modification is max pressure. Under the general heading, for shift pressures, you'll see this little section right here that says max pressure, max pressure B, max clutch, and max line. This heading right here where it says 109.9, that is the stock configuration for this vehicle. And uh, they label it as max pressure. And if you read, when you ho hover over that and you actually read what it says there, it says maximum line pressure. This is the maximum desired line pressure allowed it is a clamp for any shift table value. I don't really know what that means. A clamp for any shift table value and has the final say on the line pressure offset before it is used on the force motor current table. So this is a perfect reason why I'm doing this test because that little description there does not make uh, a lot of sense in my opinion. So anyway, max pressure, if you look at that value, it says 109.9. Well, what has a max pressure of about 109.9 or 110, or say 110? Well, the AFL valve creates a maximum solenoid pressure of around 110 to 125 PSI. So I'm gonna assume that this is more of a, like if you're, you're telling the TECM what the maximum AFL pressure is. So does this parameter simply tell the TECM what the AFL is set to? Don't really know. Theory, so this is a theory. If we adjust this pressure higher, if all we did is change that value, nothing else, it would cause the TECM to misadjust. And this is probably the opposite of what most people think. Misadjust and actually generate a lower clutch in line pressure. Because if you think about it, if the computer doesn't know what the actual transmission pressure is. So if it's calibrated to say, all right, that, that solenoid pressure, which is ultimately gonna control the pressure through the pressure regulator valve, and it's also going to, and the solenoids deliver that pressure ultimately through the, the shift solenoids and the, uh, the pressure solenoids for each of the shifts. It's ultimately going to deliver that pressure to the regulator valves for the clutch. So if it thinks it's working between 0 and 110 PSI, then it knows when it pulse with modulates that solenoid, it's going to deliver between 0 and 110 PSI for a given, it's going to have an internal table there where it's going to assume that this much current through a solenoid is going to equal this much solenoid pressure, which is going to hopefully give me a certain amount of pressure to the clutch or line pressure. Hopefully you're, you're hanging with me. If this is confusing at all to you, please watch lecture one uh, or the first part of this series. This is where I talk about the AFL and how it works and what it does in this uh, transmission. But if we went through and move that to 150 PSI, thinking that we're going to create more pressure just by changing that value, if all we're doing is telling the computer that the AFL maximum is 150, well, the only thing that controls that is a spring on a valve. 
If I don't go and actually change that spring tension to raise the pressure to 150, I'm probably going to not get that desired outcome. So here's the theory. If I go ahead and change that value to 150 PSI, but I don't change the internals of the transmission, I'm going to be lying to the Tecum and, th and let it think that there's 150 PSI. But in fact, there's still only 110 PSI. But then what ends up happening is it's going to operate the duty, it's going to duty cycle these solenoids thinking it's going between 0 and 150. So long and short of it is, I raise that to 150 PSI, I would figure that would make a substantial enough change where we'd be able to figure out if it made a difference or not. And that change by itself didn't do really anything to the transmission. This right here is my baseline. These values are my baseline, and this is the modified results. And uh, this was on the last one, two shift. So when I did these shifts, I recorded first, which is the very first shift after I did the modification. Last was after a series of shifts where uh, I let the transmission adapt to whatever that change was. And you can see the pressures are pretty close to the same. The actual clutch pressures are pretty close to the same. And this is the big one down here for the shift quality or the shift feel. I call that the inertia, or I don't really call it that, but it's known as the inertia pressure. And you can see from pre and post change, it really didn't make a difference. So to conclude on this max pressure, really, in my opinion, the only reason why you would ever want to change that value is if you've gone in there and changed the AFL pressure. Now, maybe it's doing something else. I don't know. But that is pretty much the only thing that would be around 110 PSI max. So to me, it makes sense that this would be AFL pressure or solenoid pressure. And if you haven't gone through and, and changed that value internally in the transmission, I don't know why you'd ever want to change that value in that box. So our next modification was max pressure B. And we went from 276 to 350 PSI. Let's change that value right there. And if you stop to think, what pressures operate that high in the transmission? Well, your overall line pressure has the capability of getting that high. And the pressure regulator valve, once again, kind of like the AFL example that we just gave on um, max pressure. Now, it's the pressure regulator valve lineup that is responsible for the overall pressure in this transmission. The minimum pressure is determined by the set of springs that we have in there. And then the boost of pressure that goes up to whatever the maximum pressure is, that's going to be responsible from this boost valve. There's a little va there's a valve that's in there, and you can create more boost pressure by either adding more pressure that goes into, there's a tiny little hole here. You can increase the amount of pressure going into that tiny little hole, or you can put a larger diameter boost valve in there. So what does it actually change if we adjust this value? If I put 350 PSI in here, my theory is that, kind of like AFL, if we raise that pressure higher, it might cause the Tecum to misadjust and actually you'll end up with lower pressure. So that would be the exact opposite of what people would probably want when they're changing that. If you look at the bottom here, on that call out there, when you float over max pressure B, it says, Line pressure maximum value. In some cases, this value may be calibrated as actual line pressure after the regulator gain has been applied. We haven't gone through and adjust regulator gain or anything like that, so we'll get to see what it actually changes if all I did was go in there and change it to 350 PSI. So let's see what we found out when we did some tests. Now, the first set of tests here that I've got, this is, we had one scope that was hooked up to torque converter clutch pressure and line pressure. And in red is the torque converter clutch pressure. So at this point, you could see I was probably up to a certain gear. But in the very beginning, you could see it spiked up really high. That's about the only time we ever saw line pressure go anywhere near 270 PSI. Usually, line pressure was where the clutch pressures were, which were about 210, 215 PSI. So the baseline was giving me there in the beginning 270 PSI. The alternate baseline was giving me 271. And then my the first run the first uh, pass with the dyno after the modification, I only got 271 PSI. And then the last run, it went up three PSI. So it actually, I'm not gonna consider that percentage-wise, that's nothing, right? I mean, that's less than a percent. So simply based off of that information, we could see that raising it from 276 to 350 didn't really increase line pressure at all. So what did this actually do to the transmission while it was shifting? You can see that this modification really didn't make a difference. We went through and changed that to 350 PSI was a healthy jump, but when you look at these pressures, they're pretty much the same. The line pressure was the same, the clutch pressure was the same, the inertia pressure, which is where we feel our shift occur, 
even the shape of the patterns, they look pretty much the same. So going through and doing an adjustment, a simple loan adjustment to the max pressure B box really didn't produce anything that uh, made the transmission operate any different. So to conclude on max pressure B, unless you're going through and adjusting that pressure regulator valve lineup by changing the boost valve or increasing pressure to the actual boost valve or maybe changing that spring tension that you've got in there, it's probably not worth going through and changing any of that because you're not, we're not seeing any net result change. So that 276 PSI is pretty much the pressure that we can get, the line pressure that we can get. And unless we go in there and modify the transmission so we're getting more line pressure, I think you're best off leaving that value alone. So our next modification is the maximum clutch value. You see we altered that right there from 218 PSI to 300 PSI. So the maximum clutch pressure is going to be adjusted by these regulator valves that specifically control the pressure to the clutches. If you remember from lecture one, the little chain of command is AFL pressure goes to the solenoids, solenoids pulse with modulate and they control pressure to the pressure control valves, the pressure regulator valves for the clutches. There's a lot, a lot of things in, in line there and that's probably why there's so many different little presets here, if you will. I'll probably call these presets because they're in my opinion, are telling the computer the values of these things. So in general, this is probably, and this is my opinion, this is probably letting the computer know what the maximum pressure is from those pressure regulator valves that are coming from the pressure regulator valves related to the clutches. Not the main line pressure regulator valve, but the clutch regulator valves. Now most of these regulator valves are controlled, they have a boost valve and then a regulator valve and they're all controlled by a solenoid, that solenoid operates, basically delivers to those regulator valves between zero and max AFL, which is usually say 110 PSI. Um, the 2.6 regulator valve is a little bit different. It kind of has its own little system. It doesn't have a boost valve. So its pressures might not follow that same format. So along with what I was saying before, here's my little theory. If we adjust the pressures higher, you might actually end up with a lower pressure. So now my theories haven't necessarily been true because we haven't been left with lower pressure, but so far we've been left with pretty much no change. So we'll see if this actually follows along that same format. Now looking at the results of this, just like the past test, my theory wasn't actually panning out to be true. The pressures didn't actually lower. I mean, it did a little bit on these, but not significantly. And you'll find at the 40% throttle position, our our line pressures and our clutch pressures are pretty much the same. Nothing really changed there. The inertia pressures really didn't change that much either. Maybe a couple PSI. Some, in some cases, uh, it was a couple PSI higher, in some cases lower. So I, if you're really interested in this, I suggest you download that presentation from the automotivetextbook.com site, and you can see all the different um, results for every shift. Now, as far as the wide open throttle run is concerned, actually did get like the, the line pressure and the clutch pressure is pretty much the same, but the inertia phase actually got about a four PSI gain where it transitioned at towards the end of the inertia phase compared to the baseline. So the baseline is gonna be located here if you review those, and then the modification is gonna be here. So you, with these images, you'll be able to see not only by comparing these charts, what the baseline values were and what the modified values were, but you can kind of take a look at that shape of that pattern um, or that pressure rise to see if there is some, you know, definite changes in the modification on how the computer might be adjusting pressures a little bit differently. Now this next modification was the maximum line pressure. And these, you click on this box and you gain these tables. And what I did is I multiplied this whole table by 30%. So I put 1.3 in there in that box, highlighted the whole table by clicking that box there, and I click multiply, and that raised everything 30%. So I figured that would be a substantial enough change. Now, if you look at the values though, before I changed anything, there were 109.9. Going back, it's like, okay, what's 109.9? Uh, that's AFL pressure, it's gotta be, because if that's a maximum pressure, it's not the max transmission pressure. We just saw they were in the 270s. So looking at this, you're like, okay, if I've got 109.9 or 110 PSI, well, that sounds like AFL pressure. And um, so what we did is we changed those numbers and boosted them by 
you know, really the thing about it is if you understand that the AFL is the maximum, about 110, maybe 120 PSI, that by changing that value, we're really not going to go through and change anything other than we're going to make the computer work through a different set of parameters. So it would be interesting to see how the modifying those tables will affect the way this transmission operates. And this is the little breakout right here. It says max line pressure versus RPM versus gear, maximum line pressure in each gear in relation to engine speed. So it sounds like something that somebody might want to boost so that way they can get a little bit more line pressure. Let's see what happens. Let's see how these results changed. And you'll actually find out that it did in fact increase pressure, increase line pressure. And when we measure the minimum pressures that we were getting, we were down near roughly 69 PSI, roughly 70 PSI. And then the maximum on the baseline was 272. Interesting thing is that on the modified where we raised that max line pressure 30%, we still got a 65 PSI minimum. Line pressure was just able to go about 13 PSI higher. It was able to go up to 285. So I guess by changing that column and telling it to operate different, or the tables, by changing the tables and operate different, it's going to operate the line pressure solenoid in a different pulse width. And that operates a little differently than most solenoids. On that one, when the solenoid's turned on, you actually get less pressure. And the more they turn the solenoid off, the more pressure you get. Because they want to fail this transmission so that way when, if you lost power or if the circuit opened up, you wouldn't want to fail it to low pressure, you'd want to fail it to high pressure. So they make it to the point where no current through that solenoid is equal to maximum pressure. And that might be the reason why that pressure went up to 285. And the line pressure max, like I said earlier, it didn't, doesn't really operate off that pressure. It's just like that when you first key this thing on and really before any of these shifts occur, um, I don't know if it's purging air or doing whatever, but you'll see them spike up to max and then it'll go down to a kind of a usable pressure. So the overall results from this found that if I adjusted that max line table and I increased it 30%, like I did in my example, yes, it did increase the maximum line pressure somewhat. Didn't increase it 30%, but it did boost it. Uh, but here's the thing is it didn't affect, when we went through and checked, it, checked the individual shifts and compared baseline to the modification, we actually found that the shifting pressures, the releasing pressures and the applying pressures, and then the overall pressures that the clutches were left with they really didn't change. So the only thing that we did change was that ultimate maximum line pressure, which isn't even being used to the clutches or during shifting. So if you were to go through and change just that, you probably won't notice it while you're shifting down the road because it doesn't ever use that max pressure during while shifting, that true max pressure while shifting. So an overall summary of all these modifications, adjusting the max pressure, max pressure B and clutch pressure and max line pressures they won't increase the pressure during the shifts. None of them really increase the pressure during the shifts. Uh, I guess max clutch pressure changed it just a slight amount. And I mentioned that here, max clutch resulted in a little bit higher inertia pressures. It didn't increase line pressure or clutch pressure, it just raised that inertia pressure a few PSI. It won't increase the, what I call the steady state pressures. Steady state would be is when you're driving down the road and you're in a gear and they have that clutch pressurized so it won't slip it didn't change those values at all either. So really, all of these changes that we looked at today, they probably should accompany, if you're gonna go through and tweak those, they probably should accompany the internal modifications or any changes that happen to the valve body to increase or decrease pressures uh, through spring changes or valve changes or so forth. Now that finished max pressure, max pressure B, max clutch and max line. The next one is going to be the XYZ, shift pressures, and adaptive oncoming and adaptive offgoing. So keep your eye out for that one. So now if you download this presentation, you'll actually be able to see what happens on all these different shifts with a summary table showing the values for each one. That's what you'll find the specifics on with the download. I just didn't really want to cover all of that because the video would be like an hour. Trust me, I recorded one already and it was over an hour. I'm like, nobody's going to watch this. So I went ahead and just said, I'm going to make a summary. And if you want, you can download the presentation and you can view and interpret those results any way you want. So there you have it. I will see you on the next one.